So welcome everyone. My name is Ruby Maddox. Um, this is the study way uh, for STEM uh, panel, study way for STEM students panel. And um, we have some guests um, that represent the students and um, the provider side of STEM options out there for students. Um, did want to give a, um, a nod to my co-host and co-collaborator on this, uh, Carrie Camp, um, who's going to be working the um, the chat room and just kind of like helping out uh, with um, with facilitating. Um, so yeah, um, we'll get started. So what we hope that you're able to take away is kind of that you get an understanding of what you might want to study away, uh, what your options are, um, learn about different possibilities, options and resources that exist, um, and just really get a sense of, um, you know, what you want to start doing now as part of planning to study away in STEM. Um, we know as STEM students, you're gonna have a lot of like, you know, requirements and prerequisites, things that you're gonna wanna get in and make sure uh, integrate seamlessly into your experience. And we want you to hear from people who um, either have done it or have guided students through that process. So our three guests today are Kenneth Foreman, uh, who will be talking about uh, semester in environmental science. Uh, we have Rose Griffin, uh, who is a Wesleyan uh, student who uh, studied abroad at DIS. Um, and we have Genesis, um, who, Genesis Lars Granados, uh, who's a Mount Holyoke student who studied abroad at uh, the School for Field Studies <laughs> uh, in Tanzania. So yeah, um, so we'll start with Kenneth um, and you can talk about your program. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, Ruby, you, you have, there's a couple of slides, I think, before we get mm -hmm. to the video, right? So maybe we could just right. go to that first slide. And, and I would like to say that uh, uh, the semester of environmental science uh, is a domestic option, which uh, we, takes place in Woods Hole uh, at the Marine Biological Lab. And I think one of the nice things about um, SES is, is the opportunity for students to come to Woods Hole, which is a, sci a unique scientific community. You know, there are six different institutions uh, that pursue scientific research and education in Woods Hole, more than a thousand scientists and support personnel. So different from a university, but a chance to really immerse yourself in that culture of science that takes place uh, in Woods Hole. And I, I think uh, hopefully the next slide maybe has uh, uh, takes place for anyone who doesn't know where Woods Hole is, and there might be some of you out there that don't, on Cape Cod, uh, which is a, a great spot for a program like this because we have a diverse array of ecosystems. So if you're interested in environmental science uh, or management or policy in the future, uh, this is a chance to find out what uh, the uh, estuaries, the freshwater systems, coastal grasslands and forests on Cape Cod are like and how they function as a model sort of for the global problems we face. So things like sea level rise, uh, nutrient pollution in the coastal zone are all uh, global issues we can address in a local context in the SES. Uh, let's see if the next slide is. Uh, okay, so we can, we can go straight then to so you can hear from our alumni uh, who put this video together, what their experience Hi. was in the SES, you... and then obviously anyone who has questions, hopefully we can take those up. Go ahead. This is Lauren Johnson. I'm Brianna Moore. Hi, hey, I'm Sarah Nalvin. My name is David Brown. I did SES on a whim. I was a biology major and thought it would be great to get some exposure to environmental science. And I left SES three and a half, oh, sorry. half months later, committed to being an environmental scientist for my career. Pretty much known from the beginning that I wanted to study environmental science and the classroom based courses I took in Chicago um, were really nice, but um, they didn't really compare to the field based courses that I was able to take. Um, during SES. Uh, so being able to go out in the outdoors and take water samples from local estuaries, uh, collect tree cores from, from the different forest areas around, um, being able to take those samples to the laboratory and use the specialized pieces of equipment 
uh, to break them down into different components, both living and non-living, uh, being able to draw conclusions from, from the data that you collected yourself and present you know, your findings to, to your friends and your, and your mentors. Uh, all of that really made the subject of study that much more tangible and that much more interesting. I got research experience that I never would have gotten otherwise, um, and a lot of it. And I also got um, connections that I would not have gotten otherwise. So I was able to meet the entire staff of the Ecosystem Center, these world-renowned scientists. After SES, um, I worked for NOAA for a little bit uh, on commercial fishing boats, and then ended up uh, taking a research position at the Wood School Research Center. And so having that time at SCS, working with the scientists there, uh, kind of gave me that in, and it allowed me to know what I was getting into and then taking a research position uh, prior going back to graduate school. I love Wood's Hole and the fact that I've never been somewhere where no matter where you turn, you, you just feel like there's just this vibrance and stimulating intellectual environment. Whether that's walking down to coffee O or pie in the sky, um, grabbing a coffee or croissant, you just feel like you're in this environment that's just pushing you to keep performing your best. And I hope that the future students will be able to enjoy their time there too. So thanks for listening and with that, take care. Awesome. So we just get out of this. And I think this is a really great segue into the student experience. So uh, first up, I want to uh, introduce uh, Rose Griffin and who's going to talk about her experience as a STEM student at a DIS program. Hello. Um, so I'm a senior at Wesleyan University right now. Um, I'm a molecular biology and biochemistry major. Um, and I'm a pre-med student. Um, and last fall, I studied in Copenhagen through um, DIS. Um, through my main program was their medical practice and policy program, but they have a lot of different uh, core classes that are geared towards different uh, different parts of of STEM. Um, I know people that studied. That, um, that studied things that were more geared towards like towards the environmental science side and that traveled to uh, traveled to um, Iceland and looked at ice cores but mine was uh, work studying and working in a hospital in Copenhagen so we learned from uh, learned from doctors there about human health and disease um, and got to work on patient cases and to actually talk to patients and also prep, learn some clinical skills. So um, one of my friends, we learned how to draw blood. One of my friends tried to draw my blood. I fainted. It was all very exciting. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, there are some other uh, more questions, but. Yeah, there's some other more yeah. uh, other questions that I can answer about any of those kinds of things. Um, I lived with a host family also, which was a really exciting, uh, super fun opportunity too. Awesome, awesome. And I think it's a really good um, example to um, mention because I know a lot of pre-med students, I'm not sure if you're, um, that was your type, but you took courses that pre-med students um, would be interested in. and. Um, a lot of pre-med students say that they, they can't study abroad. And so this would be an option that would definitely enhance that experience. So next we're gonna hear from Genesis um, from Mount Holyoke. And she did, like, she did, <laughs> I keep someone I'm gonna say, student financial services, which is SFS at our school. <laughs> um, she did, uh, school for financial, uh, school for <laughs> field studies in Tanzania. Um, and you can, um, Genesis, if you wanna say a few words about your experience. Yeah, so I studied with the School for Field Studies. Uh, it is confusing, especially during my financial aid application, but I studied abroad in Tanzania in the fall of 2019. And so um, I am a bio major and um, the School for Field Studies in general is a lot more environmental studies, but um, 
I really just wanted to get out of my comfort zone, do something really different. I have friends who did the traditional, you know, um, study abroad trip in Europe, and I just really wanted to stray away from that and was encouraged to do something different. And so I did. And I lived in Tanzania for three months. Um, it was a really amazing trip. I did things that I never thought I would do. Um, the program was centered on wildlife management. And so a big part of that is um, doing a lot of field expeditions and going to all the conservation parks. We went to Serengeti, and Ngorongoro, Lake Manyara, and we did all these expeditions. And so basically the program is about um, reptile ecology, ecology uh, wildlife management and tex techniques. But a big portion of the program is at the end of the semester, there's a research uh, class. And so basically you do a mini thesis in a month and you do like a 10 day camping trip and you collect all the data yourself and then you do data analysis and then you write your paper and you present actually to the community at the end of the three months. And so I think, especially for STEM students, this is nice because you basically get your own little research project in three months and it's something that you can hold on to for the rest of your life. And in my case, specifically our research projects were actually really interesting. They were about reptiles. So I did a herpetofauna analysis in a valley in northern Tanzania. And actually my professor is convinced that we discovered a new species of geckos. And so nice. it was really unique. And obviously there's a lot to come with that in the future, but um, I think it was amazing. It was a, basically a mini campus. We got introduced to so many different things and it was just an amazing experience overall. Awesome, awesome, thank you. And so we're gonna go into questions and each one of you um, can take a stab at these. And so the first question being, why would you recommend um, that STEM students study away um, versus just you know doing all four years at their institution? And anyone? I, I could talk to SES and our students. I think mm -hmm. about 70% of our students go on to grad school um, they do research, obviously, as very similar to School for Field Studies in that way. Everyone does an independent research project. Uh, and along the way, uh, they make contacts with scientists outside of their home institutions. So there are opportunities, um, not only uh, during the semester, but after the semester for internships, for uh, career building kinds of experiences that uh, end up positioning students uh, with contacts in the scientific community, as David Butman mentioned, that uh, lead to sometimes to jobs, to uh, other research opportunities that help uh, position you to go to a great grad program if that's what you're interested in. Nice. Yeah, those links outside your institution are super, super important. Anyone else? Yeah, I can go. I just added on to that. Um, Interesting enough, an alumni from the program, also in Tanzania, he actually came back later on and is a PhD student um, working on the hyena project uh, that's centered in Ngorongoro crater in Tanzania. And so I think that's really cool how it just became a full circle. But I think for us of us specifically, I think just the projects that they have you focus on is really important because um, if you're lucky, actually, I know a lot of my friends had their papers published, and so they're in the process of that. And so that's a really good, like you're just being published, I think is a really good thing to have on your resume, on your CV. And so I think this project portion of the program is really important to a lot of STEM students as well. Awesome, awesome. Um, oops, oops, sorry to me advance that. Did you have anything you wanna say or? Um... Um, yeah, I would also just add that it's valuable for STEM students to study away in the same way that it's valuable for any student to study away. Um, I think I think like STEM students maybe more have a kind of tendency to stick on this linear path towards like grad school or med school or wherever you're going. And not to say that studying abroad is a distraction from that, but it's just a way, um, I think that linear path isn't always super helpful. Um, and and studying abroad is just something that while you're furthering your education I've I found that being away like I go to school in Connecticut I grew up in Maine like I've been in this little bubble um, of New England um, and so going to this new place while still studying these things that I'm most interested in um, uh, just then also helps you more develop as a person in the way that studying abroad does I think for um, for most 
Awesome, thank you. And so what advice would you want to share with the STEM students who are considering studying away and and for the students, like what challenges did you encounter um, as a STEM student trying to study abroad and, and how did you overcome them? I can uh, speak on this. Um, I think a big one for me was language um, because I had studied enough French that I could have studied abroad in a French speaking country, but I also needed to fulfill my major requirements. Um, and so it was one thing to like go to France and improve my French and that sounded really exciting. Um, but taking molecular biology in French sounded like a whole nother level of something that I wasn't ready for. Um, and I wasn't, I don't even, I'm not sure if I could have even gotten credit for things because I don't think they would have believed that I understood anything. But, um, <laughs> um, but I still wanted to study somewhere that again, more felt like I was getting outside of the, this like bubble of things I was familiar with. So just being in a country where English wasn't the primary language was um, a lot more exciting to me. Um, and, um, and so then I found out about DIS and I think there, I'm sure there, and I know there are country um, programs in lots of different countries where English isn't the primary language there, but they have programs that are taught in English. Um, so there's a bit of a balance there. Um, and again, like I said, so I lived with a host family um, so and spent a lot of time with them and their extended family. And they, so I went to these parties where everyone's speaking Danish. So it's still like this scary thing where I was pretty uncomfortable, um, uh, like getting out of my comfort zone in that way and learning a new language uh, that now I, <laughs> now if you ask me to speak Danish, good luck with that. But um, um but so that's that was a challenge that I like wanted to, wanted to get out of my comfort zone in that way, um, but that, I think that can be harder with studying STEM things and having to fill those specific major requirements. Right. But there are a lot of there are a lot of programs where you're still able to experience these more, um, yeah, the, the, those other countries, and at the same time, learn more. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I do want to jump in. Oh, I do want to quickly jump in um, because that's a perfect plug. There's actually a, a session right after this that's like studying in a studying abroad when you don't know the language in a country that's non um, English speaking, but it's the same situation you're talking about where it's just like it's taught in English, but around you is different language and, and how do you navigate that? So that's actually a good quick plug I want to put in there. But Ken, you were going to say something? Well, I, I was just going to uh, point out that at least for programs like SES and probably School for Field Studies, where you're not at a university, it's, it's a, a different kind of experience, especially if you're coming from a, a liberal arts college, like, like the seven schools, uh, you know, in this fair, because uh, it's a single focus on a topic. So more like an immersion in a grad school experience. Um, so you, you have to be sort of excited about that idea of really spending a, an entire semester focused on doing science. Thanks. And Genesis, uh, what challenges did you uh, sort of face when you tried to, when you were um, setting this all up as a STEM student? Yeah, I think touching upon what Rose just said, but that and then a mix of financial aid. And so in the beginning, I was really set on going to Spain. You know, I have, I'm a native Spanish speaker. And so I was like, oh, I can just fly by and it'll be a nice, easy semester for me. Um, and I was lucky enough that I started my bio major early on. so if I wasn't set on getting any credit for my major study abroad, that it wasn't going to affect me terribly. And again, I thought maybe I can take a bio class in Spanish, you know, like it wouldn't be too bad. But actually my school in particular has a specific um, grant for study abroad that you can apply for and receive if you apply to an, a pre-approved program. And so then I was facing the dilemma of, I have to pick a pre-approved program. And so I found myself stuck between choosing a place or a program where it was not science related at all and then this program in Tanzania and so I was like oh I think this makes the most sense you know I'll do some some type of science and I'll do something completely different than I wanted to and you know financial aid also is part of it as well and so I find myself trying to find the balance between all of them during my process. Awesome thank you and so oops. So what's the next steps that you would recommend to STEM students who are thinking about um, pursuing this? Like what's that, 
what's that first step when they leave here things that they should consider um i think i think for me the like most helpful thing that i did kind of plant getting like when i was starting to think of studying abroad was talking to my advisor and like have setting up this chart for with all of my remaining semesters and all the classes I needed to take um, in, in terms of like major requirements and pre-med um, and just like seeing that all visually and understanding like which class I, classes I could maybe take abroad and which classes are only offered in the fall semester at Wesleyan that I need to take here. Um, and just having that all planned out for me then made it a lot easier to then start exploring the different study abroad options specifically. Um, because then it wasn't like, because then I knew looking at what those different programs offered academically, uh, that just helped narrow, narrow down my options a lot, actually. Yeah, I think Rose nailed that one. Uh, that's exactly right. You, you've got to be sure that uh, the program is going to uh, include coursework that complements and, uh, you know, fleshes out your academic program and speaking with your advisor is critical. Um, yeah, actually, my first step was speaking to a study abroad. Um, I'm not sure. Her name is April from Ahoyuk. She's just like a yep. study abroad. Ruby, you know her study abroad, but is a like coordinator. And basically, I sat down with her and she basically told me, yes, you're good to go. Like, you have all this done. You can study abroad or you're missing this and you can do this. And so I think just saying, I think that first step saying that, oh, no, like you can go abroad. And it's something that is plausible was the first step. And then right after that, the first thing I did was um, just look on my school's website for study abroad and just do my own little research of what other programs my, my school is associated with and stuff like that. So, yeah. Nice, nice. And I think that that's really important that you all bring up, like, talk to your advisor. We tell students that all the time. Like, it's also great to come to us and we can kind of, uh, as Janice has pointed out, help you navigate the study abroad process, but in terms of when it comes to thinking about how your requirements and things are going to match up, you really need to have your advisor involved in that conversation. Um, and in many cases, if possible, you know, speak to your pro the program that you're, um, you're applying to. Um, they have folks, um, amazing people like Ken, um, you know, and who work in their, the admissions on their side who are going to um, point you to the right person to talk to, help you navigate the, the experience on the other side and matching your course your course requirements and things like that to what you're doing at your home institution. Yeah, we have we have a uh, on campus, you know, rep who sort of someone who has knowledge in our area of environmental science that we designate at just about every school that uh, participates in the program. So that's also someone who knows not only about what's going on at your home institution, but what goes on mm -hmm. you know, within our program. Right. So you don't have, you're definitely, definitely don't have to navigate that alone. And so it's also good to um, understand that. And so question uh, for Genesis and Rose, um, since you've had your experiences, um, what have you gone on to do? What, what's been the next step for you at this current stage? I know you're not like, you know, out there in the field, <laughs> or maybe you are, but like, what, what has your experience kind of like springboarded you into? Um, so when I started, when we were picking research projects in Tanzania, um, there was a project on reptiles, which is one I ended up doing another one on, um, I think it was like transsex and, you know, activity pattern, another one on like socioeconomic policies in the government, in the communities. And so I was actually really excited to do reptiles because I have my own thesis project back here at campus uh, dealing with um, a particular species of water snake. And so I was like, oh, like reptiles, I'll continue to do that. And then that was enough reason why the professor allowed me to work on this research project there. And so when I came back, it's just a little interesting add on on my resume, you know, like I have this thesis project on water snakes and then I have this completely different but kind of related herpetofauna analysis on reptiles in Tanzania. And so I think they just interestingly like balance each other, funny enough, but um, besides coming back, I've just also just been working with the program a little bit, um, just becoming like a how do I say, like a representative kind of ambassador, but of course, since the pandemic, things have been stopped, paused a little bit. So just waiting to hear back on me. Right, right, right. But they will be soon. And many of the students who are here today are gonna, are, they're gonna 
clear up soon and many of the students here today are planning for future semesters. So this is totally helpful. How about you, Rose? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was um, just how, so as I mentioned, my, the, my core course while I was abroad was um, medical practice and policy. So we were spending a lot of time learning about medicine um, and getting to kind of be fake doctors a little bit. Um, and so just coming at finishing doing that and then coming back, it just made me really excited about a future in medicine um, and about learning more about human health and disease and and the potential of like actually like I think going into it, I was like, yeah, med school, like being a doctor, that sounds cool, like that sounds fun. And then getting this specific experience uh, really cemented that interest and um, has really helped me to understand more about why I would want to be a doctor and what that means and um, and what and what studying to become a doctor is a little bit like. Um, yeah, so just getting me really, yeah, more excited about that uh, future. Awesome. And Kim, do you want to share a couple before we turn it over to uh, Q and A? Uh, a couple examples that you've seen in terms of how students have uh, used their experience at SES to um, to catapult them into the, what's next. Yeah, I mean that's one of the I think kind of great things about our pro program in particular. Being domestic, I think in some ways maybe makes it a little easier to have ongoing connections with the faculty uh, and the projects that they develop, a faculty they meet and projects they develop during the semester. So it's not at all uncommon for our students to uh, take that work they initiate during the program, especially if they come during their junior year, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, build that into a senior thesis and then uh, work with faculty back at their home institutions to kind of flesh it all out. Uh, I've had students return to work at, during the summers at MBL. Um, a lot of the schools um, do have little summer grants that sometimes can be, you know, you can apply for and uh, get an opportunity to come back. I've had student work with me, uh, for example, on a project looking at uh, the permeable reactive barriers to clean up groundwater pollution. That student got a grant from Connecticut College, did a senior thesis, and then went on and did a PhD on the on the whole topic. Um, right. So, uh, you know, I think uh, that is one of the real benefits of a program like SES, and uh, is this possibility of building what you do during the semester into something much greater. Awesome! Awesome! Thank you so much. So now we are going to um, turn it over to Q&A. And do we have any questions from folks in the audience um, who are thinking about, um, you know, STEM, study away options, uh, what, um, you know, particular interest, uh, the floor is open. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to enter questions into the chat or you know, even go ahead and unmute yourself and chime in whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, while we give folks that reminder, um, I, I had a couple of uh, questions, Ruby. One I'm wondering, um, one is for Ken and, and one is for uh, our students. Ken, I was wondering if you could speak to kind of for the SES program, what preparation do students need to have and you know, kind of thinking about um, the the breadth of programs available to STEM students, which when we say STEM, you know, of course, that's many areas of study. And we have a, a diverse group of, of STEM areas represented um, today, but not all of them. So students keep in mind that, you know, or if you're, you know, math or engineering or whatnot, um, we have programs um, for you as well. Um, but Ken, uh, speaking to environmental uh, study students, you know, how much of a background um, do they need to have before applying to the program? Um, what should students keep in mind? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so we do call ourselves not the program in environmental studies, but the program in environmental science. Uh, and uh, that's for a very specific reason. We, we would like students to come to us with some basic prerequisites, uh, basic college biology. We would like you to have a couple of semesters of general chemistry and some math, either calculus or statistics under your belt before you come. Uh, we don't wanna have to explain what a mole is 
uh, to students once they get here. Uh, we really work on at sort of this interdisciplinary uh, level of looking at how the uh, organisms on the planet, especially microbes, uh, modify the chemistry of the atmosphere, natural waters and soils. These are fundamental issues in global change, uh, disruption of global element cycles, uh, climate change. Uh, so it is very helpful if students come in with some basic background first, but we're not expecting them necessarily, for example, to have had ecology because this is a program in ecology. We do not necessarily expect students to come in with research experience. That's, that's the point of coming is to uh, un, you know, get your research experience, at least the, maybe the first of your many research experiences that you might have in the future. Does that Excellent. help? So students be, that's very helpful. Students should be aware of, of the, the basic prerequisites, but maybe not feel intimidated. It sounds like it is possible to plan ahead and, and be able to meet those. Um, I'm wondering uh, for Rose and Genesis, um, what was your experience like in your areas of, of study, um, you know, biology, wildlife, uh, kind of how did it feel intimidating in terms of making sure you felt prepared and how did that end up uh, going for you? Do you wanna go first, Rose? You're, you're close to on my screen. Sure. Um, my, I would say my program was very much like there are lots of different options for classes to take and they had different levels of what you would need prerequisites for. Um, and, you know, there, it was like a lot like signing up for classes, classes here that, you know, there that, um, yeah, like professors list, if you need any prerequisites, what they are. Um, and so, and so in that sense, like the way DIS works is that it's kind of like this American university of all of the, like, or it's an international school, but it's for all for these study abroad students that's mostly Americans, kind of just plopped into Copenhagen. So it's organized a lot like um, an American university. Um, so, so in that way, that I like, and I kind of mean that going in. And so, but then there is something um, scary about being all of these new students from different schools. Um, one class that I was, I remember nervous about, I took an epigenetics course, which is the first like kind of upper level elective in my major and I was taking it in Copenhagen and had didn't like and yeah so didn't have so much of a background and I remember like the first reading we did is just like talking about all these specific genetic mechanisms and that being really scary um but but again I think because it was the, like it was formatted a lot like school here um but then in this totally new environment but still like that made it kind of less scary and it's like students that are all in the same situation as you are so that are, that are have probably have like similar broad goals with their study abroad that you do um so so yeah i would say like it kind of was like on the same track as if academically if i was stayed at wesleyan um but i think that differs i imagine that differs a lot depending on your program and where you go Yeah, so for my program, and I'm pretty sure for the entirety of SFS, the only prerequisite they have is that you have one semester of biology or environmental studies or ecology. And so to a certain extent, I think that's nice because it kind of allows anyone to join in this unique experience because I think when you're there in a place like Tanzania, I think you're all in the same playing field regardless of your major because you're learning about things that you wouldn't learn in, in any classroom in the United States. You know, like we're learning about, um, we had specific classes on hyena ecology. We had specific classes on elephant uh, ecology, reptile, reptile ecology. We studied the um, wildebeest migration. And then later on, we went to go see if we could actually see it. And so I think that's really unique in its own learning environment. But I was intimidated a bit because I knew that the program was um, environmental studies and I just do biology and so I was scared because I knew it was going to be different but when I got there like I just said it was just different to everyone and so we were all kind of together in this like newness and presented to us and so actually a few of my peers weren't even any sort of um, science I think they were like psychology majors and so 
for those students, they did struggle a bit just because we did have research papers too. We had um, data analysis, you know, SS, SPSS and Estimate S and they were just confused, but you know, we were all there together. There was only 30 of us too. And so you just um, come together all the time and we helped each other out. But I think that was the most intimidating part of it because I just didn't know what to expect as a biology major. I had just finished taking some class on vertebrae anatomy and I had learned all the systems in the body and in animals in the semester. And I was, it was my favorite class ever and it was hard, but transitioning from that to environmental science was difficult, but it was worth it in the end. So. Thank you. Really great examples. Um, and um, Ruby, if that's all right, I, I have one more question. I'm gonna put everyone really on the spot right now. I'm wondering from the students, like if there's a favorite, you know, it's kind of thinking about within, you know, the, those last uh, comments, particularly from Genesis, it was reminding me of kind of uh, what, uh, what surprises one on their uh, study away experience and, and how we learn from those experiences. Does anyone have a particular anecdote you would like to share about your experience? Um, it can be regarding your, your experience learning as a STEM student, um, but it can also just be about kind of your, your cultural experience as well. And, and can any, any particular um, times that come to mind that, you know, really struck you as um, just, you know, enjoyable kind of uh, learning moments that really exemplify the experiences that that can be had through study away good question i yeah i did say i'm going to be putting folks on the spot here <laughs> we did well i think uh, i could l let me start just by saying Thanks, very quickly uh, as the old gray-haired guy here <laughs> i i think for for us um especially the faculty uh it's really exciting to see our students sort of mature into scientists. You know, I always re recall that, uh, you know, when the semester starts, if we go to lunch with the students, uh, they say things like, okay, we're at lunch now. We, we, you know, we don't want to talk about science. And then by the end of the semester, that's all everyone's talking about. And they get such a, you know, everyone feels such satisfaction from having developed a question of their own that they're truly interested in, pursuing that research and presenting it at the end of the semester and sort of growing up into being real scientists who are not just reading out of a textbook, uh, you know, just taking a class. It's really something that people are living. Uh, and so I think for, for me anyway, as a faculty member, it's really fun to see that. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, I guess I can go. I think something, I think my entire study abroad was full of uh, memor like memorable moments, but I think something that I took away was especially the research project at the end. I laugh because now it's basically what I'm doing now. And so it was basically a mini thesis. Like I said, you know, we did data collection and we were in the field, like if we were like like you know, adults but like you know like actual field biologists and we were in the field camping for 10 days collecting our data and we came back and of course because it's a um, short time frame we had uh, like two days to do data analysis and then four days to write the paper and then we had like a day to prepare our presentation for the community and so I laugh now because I'm doing that now you know I just submitted a proposal or I'm going to submit a proposal for my thesis and I'm looking forward to presenting a senior symposium later on next semester and so I think that's something that I can take away really proudly because it's a project that I worked on really hard with my partner and it's just something that'll be there forever. And then, yeah, I think my whole experience was amazing. And I laugh also because I went after I went home and I talked to some the staff of a CBO in my neighborhood and they were like, oh, like you're doing things that like people wish to do on their bucket list. You know, I like went to the Serengeti, I hiked Mount Kilimanjaro, you know, like all these different things that you didn't think were come from this environmental studies program and it did happen and you know it was like a awesome experience that i recommend all the time so very cool it's really awesome actually <laughs> bro i'm having a hard time thinking of like a specific kind of anecdote i guess that was most uh 
surprising, but I guess what I'm thinking about now is just how, I, I guess I was surprised how um, much I built like a community of people um, with my classmates while I was there um, and like how close I got to students from um, from so many like so many different places um, around the US and just like meeting them all in Copenhagen and studying the same things. Um, and I don't know, it's just like an interesting experience kind of, um, I don't know, like coming together with so many different people um, over these shared interests in this um, new place and um, getting to travel, um, getting to travel throughout Europe and studying different health systems around um, in different countries. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, everything is like a blur together looking back at that semester. Um, but yeah, I guess just like the how, um, yeah, I guess like just the community of people that I met and grew really close with while I was there, I wasn't expecting um, and is, is really um, a super positive experience to look back at. Nice. Cool. Um, do we have any, I have a question if we don't have one if, uh, from the audience. Um, what is, I guess, thinking about your experience, um, so for the students, like, what is one thing, maybe more than one thing that you would do differently about your experience or, uh, for you can thinking about, you know, what are some, maybe some, oh, do we have, I don't want to block us, take up time and block a student question. Um, oh, sorry, Ruby, I'm sorry. I was just in the meantime. <laughs> Putting in references of where students can follow up on all the wonderful programs they're hearing about today. Please go ahead. Oh, awesome. Um, so what's one thing that you would do differently um, if you were doing your program again? And Ken, uh, what are some things that you see students, um, maybe things that have happened with students where it's just like either common mistakes or things that you would advise against that you see students sort of like um, error, um, challenges, mistakes, uh, that you see students making that you would sort of advise again. So for the students, like, what would you do differently if you could do it again? And for Ken, uh, what are some common mistakes that you see students making that you'd want to tell them to do differently, knowing ahead of time? I have, I have something. Um, I wish I had made more of an effort to um kind of be more integrated into the like co like into the greater like, Copenhagen community so meeting more Danish people um I like I had I went to I found out about an ultimate frisbee team in Copenhagen when I was there and went to a couple of practices but then it was just hard to keep up with it um and so I ended up kind of just then so I ended up spending a lot of my time either with my host family and they were lovely and I love spending time with them or just again in this kind of American bubble in Copenhagen um, and I think it would have been really valuable if um, if I had found communities outside of that to uh, to meet to meet more people um, again outside of those kinds of bubbles. So. Um, I think kind of similar to roles. I think I wish I had interacted a little more with the faculty and the staff. And so this pro my program in particular is interesting because um, we're basically, a, it was basically a mini campus. And so you're chauffeured everywhere because obviously there's not public transportation. And so you're kind of like in this bubble of getting one place to another and then going back to camp. But in the camp, you know, it was basically a mini campus and there was a dining room and there was a small library and a small kitchen and like a recreation area and a volleyball court. And so there's just a lot of uh, staff attending to the grounds and, you know, interacting and helping with you. And they're just always so polite. And so I wish I kind of interacted with them more, you know, asked them more about just themselves and their area and like the community because they are part of the SFS program for years, for a long time, actually. And so that, and then something completely, Specifically unique, I wish I paid more attention to the packing list because I didn't bring enough things that I needed or was recommended and the packing list, stick by it if your program has one. So yeah. Good, good point. It's hard for me to, to uh, come up with, you know, I, because in, when I think about our students, I, I just feel like almost without exception, obviously over 20 years with 
you know, 400 plus students, there's a few, <laughs> few students that didn't perform well, but I think almost everyone has done a great job. Uh, I think the one thing I, I would encourage students to do in a program like ours anyway, is be, be self-confident, speak uh, up about your ideas, have faith in yourself, uh, because uh, you have good ideas. And uh, even if you have a, a bad idea, we want to discuss it and e explore why. Uh, so that's the process of science, you know. Uh, success in science requires uh, trying things that haven't been tried before. And sometimes they don't work out, but that's okay. So self-confidence. Nice. Spoken like a mentor. <laughs> sure you probably mentored many, many students over the years. Um, so yeah, any, any sort of uh, parting sort of like words, advice, um, you know, before we, I don't know, we, we, when, we don't have any other questions, but any sort of parting words or advice you would give to folks, um, you know, about this area, STEM, um, you know, thinking about planning for their experience and anything at all. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. uh, it's a it's an opportunity to uh, really grow. I think whether you know for any of these programs, they all sounded great. I thought Rose uh, and Genesis did a great job of pitching their programs as well, uh, and I just see a lot of similarities in the experience uh, across programs. Uh, an opportunity to really expand your horizons. So I think people should should do it. Nice. Definitely. And we definitely want to encourage you to, um, you know, check out some of the other um, sessions that are, um, yes, the live panels, but also we have some uh, pre -re some recorded sessions um, from the last one. Um, we did a STEM panel also in the last um, study, abroad, study away fair. And so students, um, as a follow on to this, should check that out. We wanted to make sure that what we did today didn't kind of just really just overlap and say the same things. Um, so that there was value in you all being here today, but also value in checking out um, that video um, that talks also about more options and more experiences um, that students can check out. Um, and then there's also, I think Genesis brought up uh, something about thinking about uh, a funding and making you know those things, those pieces work too. And so we do have some sessions um, also pre-recorded that talk about different funding options for students and thinking about how you look for a program, you know uh, how. What are some things you want to consider as you're approaching your advisor um, with uh, planning this this stuff out or approaching uh, your study abroad office and things to be thinking about so make sure you definitely check out those sessions um, check out the session i mentioned afterwards that's uh, it's about studying abroad uh, studying and in, in, um, in countries maybe where you don't speak the language um, and also um, and Oh, check out our, our ex exhibition pages. I know there was something else I wanted to say. Uh, we have another page too, and I think um, Ken may have mentioned that you all have a page there of just um, all of the program providers and what they offer, and you can uh, connect with them. You can um, uh, connect. They some of them have links where you can set up appointments with them and their schedule. Um, something that works for your pick a time that works best for your schedule. Um, and so there's many, many things that you can find here, uh, many things that you can do after today to sort of like follow up and, and stay connected. Um, Carrie, did you want to add anything? I, I think Ken just unmuted himself maybe once. Well, only to make the pitch that yes, anyone who wants to learn more, I do unfortunately do not have another session scheduled, but I'm happy to talk to any students uh, separately if they wish, you know, we can always do a separate Zoom session or uh, just email ses at mbl.edu. Uh, that's pretty easy to remember. And, uh, you know, you, you can learn more. We do have, um, we do have a, a provider link on the site so that you can read about that. And that connects you also to, to our website. Uh, so. Yeah. Yep, we carry for that yeah, I, I put the links and that email in the chat if anyone wanted to, to grab that. And yeah, we encourage you to follow up to talk more with our panelists today if, if one of their programs seems right for you. But no, I don't have anything else to add, Ruby. I just wanted, um, you know, uh, like you, I'm sure, just thank our panelists today. 
Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I encourage everyone to please, you know, continue reaching out, having conversations. If you have any hesitations, questions, or, you know, if you have any moment, uh, you know, speaking to Ken's point moment where you're thinking like, this is not going to be possible for me, just reach out to, um, you know, your, your study abroad office or the program or whatnot to have a chat first and see if we can support you in whatever uh, barrier seems to be kind of coming up at you. Um, because we, we hope that through the panel today, we've busted the myth that STEM students can't study abroad. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, so that's it. Um, yes, thank, um, thank you, Carrie, uh, for co-hosting co with me. And also um, thank you to our panelists um, for being here and giving just amazing, amazing, insightful information. And so we hope that um, you all enjoy the rest of the fair and um, to our panelists that you enjoy the rest of your day.